ladies and gentlemen, John Mulaney. Thank you, thank you very much. It is great to be here hosting Saturday Night Live. Uh, I am John Mulaney, and if this is your first time tuning into the show, I host every week. <laughs> I'm fully kidding. This is only the second time I've hosted. I actually was lucky enough to host the show last April. Uh, I believe we have a photo. <laughs> right, it was April. It's great to be in New York because I live in New York, and it's always convenient to be where you live. I was walking down West 13th Street the other day. I was walking down West 13th, and this couple is walking towards me. I'm walking towards this couple, and as they walk past me, the boyfriend says to me, hey, cool guy. And then his girlfriend went, aw, that's mean. And <laughs> I, I experienced both the compliment and the insult in real time. He was like, hey, cool guy. I was like, oh. She was like, that's mean. I was like, right. <laughs> I was a cool person at one time. I used to do cocaine. That's true, me, the person you're looking at. I would smell it up into my nose and I'd get a high from it. Uh, a quick tip from my experience, doing cocaine will not make your ex-girlfriend get back together with you, but it will make her worry about you. And in the end, what's the difference? I'm, uh, I'm very happily married now. Uh, I'm very happily married. My wife is Jewish, uh, and I was raised Catholic, which you could all tell from the moment I walked out. <laughs> That's not a big deal, uh, getting married if you're Jewish and Catholic. Only a couple people asked about it, and they were my parents. <laughs> Before we got married, my mother asked me if my wife was going to convert to Catholicism. <laughs> you're right to laugh. <laughs> it's a stupid question. <laughs> oh, I don't know, Mom. Let me go ask. Let me go see if a 29-year-old Jewish woman who doesn't like any of my suggestions would convert to, what was it again? Roman Catholicism? How would I even have that conversation? What, do you come home with a brochure and you're like, hey, honey, allow me to tell you about an exciting, not new organization. Don't Google us. You know that strange look of, you know that strange look of shame and unhappiness I have in my eyes at all times, especially after sex, and it was all forced on me at birth? What if you voluntarily signed up for it? My wife and I have a French bulldog. Her name is Petunia. She's a little French bulldog. She's great. She's got a little flat face. She likes to walk, but she can't walk far because she can't breathe well by design. So we push her around New York in a stroller. That's absolutely true. And this next story is also absolutely true. My wife was pushing our bulldog, Petunia, in a stroller down 7th Avenue South a few months ago. She's pushing her down 7th Avenue. My wife gets to 7th Avenue and Leroy Street. At 7th Avenue and Leroy Street, a car pulls up. Out of the car steps Woody Allen and Soon Yi Previn. My wife stares at Woody and Soon Yi. Woody and Soon Yi stare at a woman pushing a bulldog in a stroller. The four of them stare at each other. And then they all kind of nod as if to say, none of this is right. And then they went their separate ways. Personally, I personally take the subway in New York. I love the subway because of the male and female voices that narrate the subway, that man and that woman. The woman who does the subway announcements and her way too loud husband. You know, the woman who's like, the next stop is Christopher Street. Stand clear of the closing doors, please. Why are you shouting? What are you, in the next room? I asked my friend who works for the city, I said, why is it a male voice and a female voice? And he told me because it's been proven that people will take information from a female voice, but they will only take a warning from a male voice. <laughs> now that's its own American gender nightmare that we don't have time to get into. 
But I have to say, I trust that woman more. I like how she says the subway stops, because she always says them like they're a little secret. She's always like, the next stop is... Chambers Street. Assaulting an MTA worker. I wasn't gonna do that. They warn you about that now. There's also signs in the back of taxi cabs that say, murdering a taxi driver will get you 25 years in prison. Oh, okay. I guess I won't do it. <laughs> that doesn't happen in any other industry. It's not like at restaurants, they're like, uh, your server Michael will be right over. Oh, by the way, killing a waiter in the state of New York is a class A felony. I'll get you some bread. <laughs> there's, uh, there's so many police car sirens in New York, but there's a new type of siren. It's been around the past two, three years. You probably heard it. It's a new siren. It's a little faster, and it also has a fun and funky beat. And I think that cops like to use their siren more because they know it sounds fun and they know it sounds funky. You've heard the new siren. It's like... It's like there's a DJ in the back of the patrol car. It sounds like two sirens talking to each other. Like... It's so fast. Sirens used to be so slow and beautiful. I was watching this old movie on Turner Classic Movies because I was not an athletic child. And it was a Hitchcock movie called Rope. And in the end of Rope, there's a gunshot, bang. And then you hear this old fashioned siren. And it was so slow and beautiful. It was like. It was like an old gay cat was dying. <laughs> but not a sad death, not a sad death. He lived a full life and he's surrounded by loved ones and he's in hospice, he's in cat hospice. And he's holding hands with a rabbi and he just kind of uh -oh. We've got a great show for you tonight. Thomas Red is here. Stick around and we'll be right back.